had a question about the firewall and the clearance for the motor. Now, I've just disconnected that out of the way for you, but as you can see there, we have had to modify it quite a bit to get this motor to fit. Now, we've used a hammer and we've just bashed it back because there is actually a cavity in behind that there. So we've pushed that cavity all the way back. I think it was for the air conditioning or something like that. Um, so just down here, I'm trying to get a good view for you. You'll see here that that's been pressed in. So that used to go all the way around the back there. And as you would have seen, it would have gone straight into the top of our head. So we've had to trim that back. And by trimming it, we just put a few cuts and then we've just bashed it down with a hammer. And we've put a couple of tack welds on it for the sheet metal that we cut and pressed down. But as you can see, we have lots of clearance. There's about an inch or more clearance all the way around it now, um, which is what we wanted because we might have a sensor at the back there from memory that we need to get to. So a hammer is what we used because a hammer is what we had. Alrighty. <clears throat> Um, a little bit more on the motor. Um, we have done some internal work. Um, we've done the oil pump gears uh, because we've been told that they shatter uh, if you're just constantly bouncing them off of the, the rev limiter. Um, so we've put some, I believe they were baramod.com. That's what my friend bought. So that's what we put in there. They seem pretty strong and pretty good. Um, and we've also done valve springs. Um, I got the Dominator uh, valve springs upgrade. I think they're 95 pound I think um, and I also got the tool to do that from from them as well which um, was really easy it was good actually very very easy um, the fuel lines are very easy as well we have just tapped in to the existing fuel rail that's come up we've just got some hose going to it our return line we've brought back around as well I've just got some hose clamps those rubber subtle hose clamps and we've just gone straight back onto the return line um, we did have to swap two fittings down under. I'll just jump under for you. Ugh. All right, so we just had to swap over because that rail up the top there, that was actually a vent line and we've now converted it to the return line just because it was a hard line and it runs up there very nice. I've also put in a Falcon fuel filter just because it was easy to chuck in there and I've just put some brass fittings on the end of it and push the hose on, which was nice and simple. Uh, while I'm under here, I'll just scoot under a bit more. We are running a T5 gearbox um, and it's because we got it for free out of a car in a paddock, which suited us just fine because it was free. Um, I made the mount just out of a bit of angle, some really thick angle and rubber mounts. So they're actually gearbox mounts and they're really cool because they've got this, I think it's 10 mil bolt with thread and then it's the exact same for the T5. So I just screwed them straight up there. They had the droppers here. I made the plate, bolted on the plate to the existing cross member, or whatever you call them. Um, and yeah, that should be strong enough. And then those, those rubbers should take out a lot of vibration that we don't want. Um, back a bit more. We are getting a custom tail shaft made for this. Um, so we do have the room here. This is the Ford Falcon yoke, and we're gonna get that adapted to a smaller tail shaft. Um, I think the fella said that we've been talking to, he's, I think it was two inch or two and a quarter or two and a half, something like that, um, with a really, really thick sidewall so we can pump the power up on it and not have to worry about upgrading that later on, which is what we want, which is cool. Um, and I think it still will be a two-piece. Um, so back to a center bearing and then back to a constant velocity joint on the actual differential. You can also see our clutch line as well, how we've ran that one. I think we'll be changing it. So we've got it coming out of there and down and around. We were going to make a plate to simply hold it up here out of the way, but our exhaust. We're going with a three inch exhaust and it's just going to be in the way, I feel. We can tuck it up, but I'd just, I'd rather get down of the way altogether. So I think that's what we'll do. 
Um, as you can see up there, that's the cross member that we had to trim down. So not too much at all. Uh, we're left with about 10 to 15 mil clearance there, which is plenty. Um, and the steering rack as well. Very hard to see, but we do have clearance there. It's about 10 mil. Um, we went with the front sump off an FG, no, sorry, rear sump. Yeah, sorry, we, we swapped them around. We put the, went from the BA sump, which is a front sump, because we have the steering rack there. We got the FG, changed everything over internally, the oil pickups, all that sort of stuff. And the rear sump fits with ease, with plenty of room. About 20 mil to 25 mil of room. There's our engine mount that we just made out of some angle. Nice and easy. Goes up to the um, tough mount um, engine mounts. And you just extend to them, build from there. Nice and easy. Ugh. Ugh. Struggles. Little shed. Nice isolator on top of the boot, just because it's cool. Um, in the boot, I've built a little rail system for the battery. It did used to sit over here, um, but we moved it from there just in case we have a side impact or someone comes over and taps us and we crush our battery and we can't get it out. So I've made a bit of a rail along here. Um, again, the same angle that I made the um, gearbox mount out of. I've just flipped it around and made a bracket for the battery. I've also got some 8mm rod, put a thread on it, put a bend on it, drilled a hole underneath, and they lock into that. So I'm actually going to drill a few more holes along here so that we can move the battery back and forward depending on if we need to or not. We don't know. <laughs> Learning. Um, I built uh, the strut bar, the brace, just out of a bit of pipe. Um, I think they call it gas pipe up here or something like that. It's got a really, really thick sidewall. It's very heavy stuff. Um, so that'll give us a bit of rigidity in the rear end, which is what we want. Um, the wiring, we've gone down to a resettable breaker. Uh, from that breaker, we then run up to the front fuse panel. I do also have another power coming in from the front, which goes through the other circuit breaker. Um, everything's protected. You've got to be protected and I've gone with resettable breakers because we're going to be out on tracks uh, So there's no point having a power failure out there and not being able to reset the system Because you don't have that fuse or you don't have you know the 40 50 amp 60 amp 120 180 amp fuse that you need for this type of mains wire um, So that's why we went resettable nice and easy. We got them on eBay They're waterproof. I think they're actually marine or well, you can use them in boats as well. Yeah, so that one's 100 amp and I've got another one up the front on the cable as well. So this cable here feeds into it and then that one down there, it goes up to the front. I've got my fans as well. Um, one of my fans for the front coming to this, going directly to the battery. And the other one picks up the power from the front. Um, just trying to equal out the loads, trying to not, you know, draw too much um, and um, not overheat and burn anything out is the plan on that one. The, um, the radiator bracket, I've made that one out of some flat bar as well and just put a, a bend on it, 90 degrees. Um, I did have it mounted differently and my mate pulled me up and he said, because we're running a plastic tank, you cannot solid mount a plastic tank because they expand um, and they'll crack and I'll go through them like there's no tomorrow. So we've made up some aluminium tabs with some rubber mounts on the top there. They're quite flexible, but very sturdy. They don't move at all. Um, and we've also gone with the standard rubbers down here as well. I did have some makeshift ones that I had on before. It just wasn't good enough. It wasn't going to hold up because these have a lot of weight when you're bouncing around. Um, yeah, very prone to breaking. So. That's why I've upgraded that after good advice. Um, with the vacuum lines as well, we've tied all them in with this red hose, which is really cool. It's actually called vacuum hose, so it doesn't squish. So it cannot get sucked in and kinked down. 
Um, I just get that from super cheap or I think it was Auto Pro in town. Really cheap, it's like seven, eight bucks a meter. But it's really good stuff. You can use it on all fluids. Um, it's what it's what it says on the hose. Um, so we're Thanks again guys, and uh, if there's anything else you'd like to know, drop a comment. I'll try to make a video on it. If I can't, I'll put up some photos of it. Um, yeah, let me know. And uh, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thanks.